Tobacco giant British American Tobacco has made a new pledge for sustainability that should change the way it does business in the years ahead while it continues, assuming, to grow its bottom line. Kinsley Wheaton is Chief Growth Officer at BAT. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks for having me. So pretty ambitious net zero goals. And it's interesting that uh, the chief growth officer is one of the voices for those goals because you have to do both. Uh, and, and it can be costly getting to net zero. How do those two match up? Yeah, sure. I mean, sustainability is, is very at the heart of our strategy. We recently published our low carbon transition plan to be net zero by 2050. Already uh, 15 of our manufacturing sites are net zero. Uh, our views vapor brand is already carbon neutral as well. But, but the real story of our sustainability beyond net zero is the transformation of our portfolio, uh, aiming to reduce the harm uh, that our products cause through the transition from combustible cigarettes to reduced harm nicotine products. And that, of course, gets to the heart of what uh, somebody who's thinking about the growth and the future of a tobacco company must be thinking about. How is that progress going? Because you still, like many tobacco of the biggest tobacco companies, make the lion's share of your revenue and your profit from those combustible products that are cancer causing. Well, it's going really, really well, and it's actually happening right here in, in Canada. So over 20% uh, of our net sales revenue now is in vapor products. We have the largest vapor brand in Canada in views. Uh, we've committed to targets by 2030, uh, 50 million uh, adult consumers of uh, reduced harm uh, nicotine products and five billion pounds, what's that, about seven billion Canadian of uh, net sales revenue. So the transformation is well underway. And I must say that Canada is one of the most advanced countries in uh, adopting tobacco harm reduction and the implications for our transformation. And so internally as a company, of course, we know these, these transformations can be difficult because there is still a large and money-making operation in the old business. Is there tension inside as you transition and you would want to transition some of your very customers and therefore the sales from one group over to another? No, there's no tension. In fact, quite the opposite because our job is to maximize the value streams from combustibles that allows us to fund the acceleration, uh, accelerated transformation in new categories. So I think the two work in harness together, if you like. Uh, obviously, our uh, new category products are improving their profitability all the time. So if you think about the future growth of the business, sustainable growth of the business, it's by having those two categories working together that will drive the sustainable growth and also the shareholder value delivery long into the future. We know there will be increasingly Kingsley metrics applied and, and values given to uh, each of the E, S, and G. The E, it sounds as though you're well in front of and intent on targeting. Do you worry about the, the social component of that if indeed we get to places where bond ratings, for instance, are affected by uh, that kind of a, a rating and it does go to the harm that may still be d being done by the industry. Uh, sure. I mean, the, the ESG overlay from a sort of indices metrics point of view is really important. You're right. We've made great progress in the E. I think our tobacco harm reduction story is actually the underpinnings of the story about the S. That's how we deliver societal value. Uh, as part of our multi-stakeholder value delivery uh, promise. If you take Canada, for example, you know, a million people have already made the switch. There's three million smokers. There's a lot more to go for, but a million people have made the switch to re reduced harm products. So we're making great progress, and I think that is our societal purpose, uh, which is inherent within our Better Tomorrow strategy. So good to have you with us, Kingsley. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Amanda. Kingsley Wheaton is Chief Growth Officer at BAT. Time for the takeaway and skating on thin ice. Hockey Canada took a bruising recently as sponsor after sponsor said they were withdrawing support from the organization in response to the recent scandals, but also as a show of non-confidence in the folks running the place, management and board who for too long refused to resign. Money is one thing, but when Tim Hortons and Canadian Tire turn the lights out on you, an organization as rooted in Canada's psyche as Hockey Canada has some soul searching to do, and it seems they found their way to an answer. With the board and CEO resigning en masse this week, no question, PR experts will call it too little, too late. And with timing that shows its troubles may be far from over, hockey skate maker Bauer said on that very same day it would no longer provide equipment and sponsorship to men's teams. Its confidence is just too shaken. But it and the other former sponsors might do well to reconsider their position now. As tempting as it may be in this precarious economic environment to walk away from big ticket sponsorships and call it a moral victory, the fact is that Hockey Canada can and should do good work in this country at every level. 
by all means hold everyone to account who needs it, legally and otherwise. Insist on change to a culture that was found to have promoted toxic behavior right down to the grassroots. But to withdraw all support removes the spotlight and pressure at a time when a great deal of work is needed. My takeaway? Having made their point loud and clear, sponsors can use renewed support to ensure real change happens. Withdrawing it permanently just hurts the wrong people. That's Taking Stock for this week. I'm Amanda Lang. Thanks for being with us.